guys welcome back to metastic days um here is the new video um today we're gonna talk about ivcc interboard committee of chairmen um and they're actually responsible for equivalence so i'm gonna talk about the details of equivalence so we just go under equivalence um and it basically tells you some basic details um and you could just read more this is helpful to read just to understand what equivalency is and how it really works essentially what they do is they basically call your grade 10 matriculation which is ssc and your grade 11 and 12 hssc which is secondary school high school or whatever you want to call it um so that's your grade 11 and 12 um and they just tell you the basic rules and requirements for equivalence so you need an original high school diploma grade 9 through 12 official consolidated four years transcript duly sealed signed and embossed by the issuing authority usa or you know this is both for america and canada um and then if we go down they talk about other systems too and they have a specific area for the canadian system so um, these are just the basic details, but what I want to go over is actually the form. So you go under equivalence form, and this is what loads up. So this form actually took quite a while to fill in because there's a lot of information and guidelines they give here. So um, a few note-taking tips I'm going to start with is um, you're going to need all official documents. When I mean official, I mean if you are taking, if you're getting, let's say, a Canadian transcript for your grade nine, grade nine must be um, signed and stamped by the school, and the envelope must be sealed, must be embossed. You got to go to talk to the school authorities, the principal, or someone to get that done for you. And then for high school, there's an institution like for Alberta, it's Alberta Education, and you can actually order a transcript. Um, in Alberta, we use MyPass, and it's an online thing that you can order transcripts on. It's literally just $10, and basically what you do is they actually stamp it and everything, and you need your original high school diploma also, you know, um, sealed in an envelope. And when that transcript comes in, or when that diploma comes in and it's sealed in an envelope, don't open the envelope because you want to give it, give everything sealed. All those documents have to be sealed. So, let's talk about application form for equivalence of qualification. So, you're going to need your name, as on certificate or diploma, father, father's name, date of birth, place of birth, present address in Pakistan, permanent address. For my permanent address, it was a little confusing, but since I was moving to Pakistan, uh, since I was living in Canada, I put in the Canadian address. Your phone number, your cell number, nationality, so Canadian, Pakistani, what are you, you know? Your CNIC number, your parents probably have this, or registration number if you don't have a CNIC. I don't really know how that works because my father really took care of that, but um, these are just Pakistani, basically, docu Pakistani documents. I don't really know too much about them, so next thing is name of certificate. Okay, so your SSC, you're basically going to choose if you're in the science or arts. You're in the science. Just choose science if you're going into medical because chances are you're probably not in the arts. You probably did most of science, ten, most of your grade 10 science, math, and you know all those other subjects. So just go into science if you're into um, medical. Um, and then they have pre-medical, humanities, and everything. So because I took math instead of physics, I actually had to put humanities. But if you took physics, you take pre-medical, okay? It doesn't matter because um, uh, PTAP accepts both physics and math. So if it's in humanities, you've taken math. If it's in pre-medical, you've taken physics. But then you also have to take chemistry and biology. Those are like necessary. Um, okay, so this is for IBCC only use. So this whole bottom thing, you gotta just get rid of it. Um, and the other thing over here is make sure to attach a good photo here yourself. Um, and then now do you talk about present employment of parents? Is it government or private? You just talk about the job and then your father's CNIC number, designation, mailing address. This is just general information. So the title of certificate slash diploma in the country. So which country did you get your um, diploma from? Um, so then you talk about level of secondary education. Um, I put upper slash senior secondary. I don't really understand what this specifically means. 
but I put upper slash senior secondary because I thought of it as high school because senior high <laughs> I don't know so I put senior secondary um so then we come down here examination system so examination when they ask you external or internal external is that there's a body that basically does these there's a board that does these exams and internal is it's like in the school basically so if I give you the definition of external there's like an issuing body that takes care of it external examination and that is an examination prepared by someone outside the faculty of the school so it's basically like a board for Alberta it is external examination but let's see internal examination um, internal examination is basically, well, we're seeing something else here, but, um, it's basically in the school. So there's actually a definitions of these on the actual IBCC website, so you can look those up if you're still confused, but external, for Alberta in Canada, it's external examination because Alberta Education administers diplomas. So duration of course in years, class one onwards. So from grade one, how many years? It's basically 12 years of school. Um, medium of instruction, that's the language, so you just put English. Name of the country where the certificate was obtained, that is Canada, um, or whatever country you're from. Name of the examining body, confirming the certificate, that's Alberta Education for me. So you're just talking about the board that is in control of that. Um, and then the accreditation status of institution along with the name of accrediting authority. So for this, I put in Alberta Education because they were actually in control of my transcript. So I put the name of the institution, their mailing address for Alberta Education. Um, because it asks for the accrediting authority. So it's not essentially asking for your school. It's actually asking for the authority that kind of gave you your transcripts and all of that you know, all of those important educational documents. So I put in Alberta education. Um, and then purpose of equivalence, you just write study. So that's basically it. And you just put in the information for your accrediting authority. Um, and then, oh yeah, over here, title of certificate slash diploma in the language of, okay, so this, you don't put the country, sorry. You actually put in what, what it's called there. So for me, it's called an Alberta high school diploma. So it's the title of the certificate or diploma in the language of the country they were. So you just write Alberta High School Diploma in English or whatever it's called in your country. So a requirement for students in US and Canadian systems of education. So you're gonna need your original high school diploma. If you're in USA, you're gonna need it issued by an accredited US institution is required in case of original high school uh, diploma issued by Concerned Ministry of Education. So we actually have a Ministry of Education and they give out original high school diplomas um, and you can even get them um, kind of like I don't know if you want to do this. I chose to do this just you know So you can actually get a document that is officially I guess stamped by your Ministry of Education um, and basically, I got one that was also, um, signed and imposed by, like, the justice minister, some other solicitor, not solicitor, sorry, some other authority, um, just in case, um, I needed that. But even just an Alberta high school diploma, or whatever diploma you guys have, as long as it's official, it's, you know, stamped and it's, like, in an envelope, it's good to go. Um, and in Alberta you actually get them for free so you can order them and they're for free and then you need your grade 9 to through through 12 original official consolidated four years transcript so you're gonna need this basically your grade 9 in Alberta is actually from the school and grade 10 to 12 is from Alberta Ed and they actually make it very official so the back of the transcript is actually um, heat sensitive so if someone touches it they know so it can't be tampered with so it can't be tampered with um, and that's that's basically for Alberta now um, they just talk about the SSC right here so this information kind of isn't necessary for us so let's go down here okay three science subjects physics chemistry and biology with complete one year credits a separate subject so for the free medical group you need physics chemistry and biology 
for the humanities group you can have math but it's fine if you have math um but both grades up so essentially they're just talking about the basics of passing grade 11 and 12 courses and whatnot um rules for transferred courses number of required subjects for canadian system marks may will be calculated on the basis of 10 academic required subjects five from grade 9 and five from grade 10 for equivalence of ssc and 10 academic required subjects five from grade 11 and five from grade 12 for the equal equivalence of hssc so they're basically saying that you're going to need 10 subjects if you're under the canadian system um you're gonna need five subjects from grade 9 and 10 for equivalence and five for grade 11 and 12 for the u.s so they have each of the systems here you can go through this if you want to but i want to talk about the canadian system so essentially you're just going to need 10 subjects five from grade 9 five from grade 10 for ssc okay so your basic five subjects are your social studies english and then science you know, you're just your basic subjects essentially um grade 10 same thing grade 11 and 12 is where it kind of comes a little difficult so you're going to need five subjects from grade 11 and five from grade 12 for equivalence of hssc so essentially that's your english your social your bio your chem and let's say your physics or math that makes five subjects you're going to have to have that from grade 11 and five from grade 12 because that's how it works in canada but it might it works different as you can see in the u.s so just depends on your country so these are general cases okay so I'm gonna talk about the documents that I submitted um, and this is documents to be attached general cases we'll read through this but you don't need to give everything because this is this is for all general cases right so it's not just for like dual nationals um, you're gonna need your CNIC passport photocopies you're gonna need photocopies of basically your Pakistani identity and your um, I guess abroad identity or your foreign identity like if you're a Pakistani Canadian have your Canadian passport photocopy it you know all those documents like citizenship and that type of stuff like the basic documents you're gonna need them photocopied um, and then what you're gonna need is your certificate slash diplomas um, and certificate by diplomas I mean they call it certificate in some countries and diplomas in another so um, you're just gonna need your diploma um, and you're gonna need your original transcripts, original diploma, um, and okay. So in case of indigenous qualification, this is for indigenous qualification. But what I suggest is giving multiple copies of each document, like the photocopies of the passports. Kind of make multiple co copies just in case, you know, you might need it for something else. You can just put them in this document. Um, so, not this whole area is for us, so it's just general. But I want to talk about the authority letter. Sh the authority letter. So, if you're actually sending this to someone in Pakistan and they're going to submit it to ibcc for you then you're gonna have to have an authority letter and i'm gonna like highlight this because people forget this and i know some and i've heard of many cases of people who didn't do this and then ibcc was like well we can't give it to your uncle because we don't know if we should like we can't because there was no authority letter um and you'd have to fly to pakistan to get your equivalent certificate and that's pretty much ridiculous but you need to have an authority letter um, in case of documents being submitted by any other person other than the candidate or his or her blood relative or spouse. So just write in that document, you know, what's their CNIC number? Where do they live? This person is this person's like, you know, uncle or something, whatever the relation is. Um, and just say, well, they're going to pick up the IBCC equivalent certificate. So IBCC has offices in Karachi, Islamabad, you know, main cities, right? So you can submit it to any main cities. Um, and then the person who's paying over there in Pakistan can take care of that fee area. Um, you could just put the date, um, and then you just need a signature, uh, letter of applicant, slash parent, slash... So, um, so this would be, uh, your signature right here, and then the name down here of your parent. Okay, so, um... And I think you should put your name in block letter too, because it says block letter of applicant. 
Okay, so these are the prices for Pakistanis. Now, if you're submitting, if you're submitting from like, let's say Canada and you don't have anybody to submit in Pakistan, you're essentially going to look at foreign qualification equivalent to SSA. So basically, um, they're going to tell you the price. So it's $70 for your matriculation and $70 for your HSSC. So yeah, $140. Um, and then FedEx school will be paid by the applicant in case original documents along with the equivalents that are, are required to be posted So if you want the equivalence letter or certificate posted to your address in another country You're gonna have to pay for the FedEx courier services, but in general the equivalence fee is about $140 um, And then they just write double fee for duplicate certificate and look at this You just need one certificate and that should be enough and this is for Pakistan Obviously the person in Pakistan knows better and they can go to their office and submit all this stuff um okay let's see let's see okay yeah so just have most of your documents there with you your passports your i think the most important thing is your grade 9 through 12 transcript and your original diploma um and your just passport and that stuff but you need to have grade 9 i know in alberta high school is only grade 10 to 12 but they need grade 9 and 10 for your um, matriculation and then for your HSSC they need grade 11 and 12 so yes grade 9 is definitely necessary um, and then now I'm going to talk about how much time this takes so usually if you're submitting from Islam from Karachi it's actually going to go to their main office in Islamabad and that's going to take some time and then they're going to process it over there and that's going to take some time and then sending the certificate to you back to Karachi that's going to take some time so I did from Karachi it took around two months it's insane but you have to prepare for that I think it was around two months or one month something like that they usually say they take around two weeks but trust me in the whole process sometimes there's certain things missing and because of that they take a long time so make sure to fill in this carefully look it over make sure you're not missing anything in the general requirements and whatnot so you really want to make sure all your information is accurate and it's you know complete um so they do have a phone number i don't know if they ever pick up so if you have any questions i guess you could approach them but i would suggest telling someone in pakistan to approach their main office because they'll give you more reliable information um so that's basically the whole idea of equivalence and application form for equivalence um and i think that sums up what i needed to say for this video if you have any specific questions please let me know i didn't want to make this too long and talk about like each of these nitty-gritty details of the british system of like everything i just try to sum up a little bit of a summary of the canadian system because i'm just much more familiar with that and i feel like i should be talking about something i'm more familiar and experienced with so i don't know too much about o level so i'm not going to go too much into that um but let me just address something important we're going to go out of this form um let's talk about their equivalence form okay so wait equivalence fee challenge conversion formula okay so they have this huge doc on the whole conversion formula um it's really huge and i don't think anybody should read through this but essentially what equivalence is they're converting your marks from the abroad system from the dual national from whatever country you're from and they're converting it to a pakistani system they do talk about a 15 percent deduction it doesn't mean you lose 15 percent it's right here 7.5 percent deduction be made on numeric marks awarded by foreign external examining bodies all over the world so 75 percent 7.5 percent for external examining bodies 15% deduction be made on numeric marks awarded by foreign so this is 15% deduction um, and this is just the way they try to get you into that 1100 thing in Pakistan essentially the scores are out of 1100 so your HSSC it's basically out of 1100 which is your important thing for um, applying to medical school is your HSSC um, your grade 10 isn't really considered your grade 9 and 10, but they still require you to get the whole certificate, right? So they still need you to get the whole uh, grade 9, 10, 11, 12 certificate, but your grade 10 and 11, like, I mean, 9 and 10, especially for PTAP, it's not as important. So 
but for your grade 11 and 12 um, and in general grade 9 10 too there's a 15% deduction and what that means is that they're converting your marks to a Pakistani system and that's all it is it is going to take your marks down so when you calculate your final mark you're gonna let's say you're in the 90s you're going to end up in the 80s in the end. Like your average, your whole average score would be out of 1100. So if you have a 902 out of 1100, you calculate that and you see how much that is. So they give you a certain number out of 1100. Um, and that's basically your grade 11 and 12 mark. That's what it is. Like your grade 11 and 12 average mark is out of 1100 because in Pakistan there's 11 subjects. So... Um, this deduction, I don't really know. I don't really understand the whole like philosophy behind it or why they do it specifically. But I do understand is what I do understand is that everyone goes through it. So if you're going to lose 15%, everyone else is too. So I don't like it when people stress out too much about this deduction stuff because everyone goes through this process um, and they get a mark out of. 1100 and they talk about each country's conversion like what they mean like so for Pakistan um, Actual score is a 90 to 100 and an A for Pakistan is actually an 85 and then they do 5% more deduction So you end up in an 80% so you are at 90% but you end up in an 80% right so this is how it works for them um, And they have it for each system. I don't recommend going through it. Just understand that this is their job This is not your job to convert and find out how much you have they're gonna give it to you I think in the meantime just be patient and you know give yourself take yourself out of that anxiety mood of like the whole 10% deduction 15% deduction oh my god I'm gonna lose marks so you're not because everyone's gonna everyone's gonna go through it so if someone has a 70 they're gonna end up in like the 60s after they will do the whole deduction thing um and you just have to let yourself <laughs> not sink into that too much because that isn't as relevant to your medical I guess journey what's relevant is that you work hard through your high school and you get the marks you need please try to get above 90 because it is very competitive with PTAP or at least in the 80s because there's a lot of competition here so you do want to have that I do like to keep that there and I do like to clarify that to people that if you're in the 70s, you might not be able to get into a medical school in Pakistan because what they say is that you need 70% after equivalent. So after they've done the 15% deduction, you need to have at least 70% to be able to to be eligible to apply for a medical college, let alone be in the competitive average, right? So if you're in the 70s, 60s, I suggest working much more harder and trying to up your marks because over here it's not about an interview it's really about your merit your marks and your SAT marks so it's it's time to focus and gear the focus away from you know what what you're gonna get out of that 1100 and to focus more on your exams here on your SAT subject test and try to get a really really good mark in it right and then once the equivalency comes it comes so you know <laughs> you're just gonna have to submit these documents and you're just gonna have to wait for a long time. So what I did was, I got my diploma results in like July. So that, those are my like examination results, board examination results. And I submitted, I prepared all my documents in the beginning of August. So I had them all ready and I submitted them. And basically towards like the end of September, I think. Yeah, that's when they sent in all those documents. And that's where I had my transcripts ready. Also, the transcript will also take time to like ship to your house. So, you know, calculate this time because the deadline is October 10th. And I know it's a lot of time, but let's say you're like shipping it to Pakistan or something. It's all going to take a lot of time. So make sure to calculate for that so you're not late. Um, and then once you do your application for PTAB and you get your conversion certificate, what you're going to do is you're going to send all of that stuff to EAD economic affairs division which actually requires your equivalent certificate so that's why we're making this whole equivalent certificate because PTAP, self finance all those people they want your equivalents okay so you need your equivalents so this is why it's important and it's important to do this before your PTAP application and that basically sums up all the details if you have any specific questions just DM me on Instagram you know email me <laughs> I'm here to help you out but that basically sums up what this whole video is about 
and now I've lost my voice. But it's fine, it's fine. I'm still surviving. Okay, have a great day, and I'll see you next time on Metastic Days.